Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting going to episodes 2 and 3 of season 3 of Ben's video. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 2. And 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> We know she's going to say yes. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's just, you know, she's nervous. Probably a little bit stressed about it. <laughs> like I said, it would have been better to just wait until after the... <laughs> It was just the heat of the moment. It's okay, Roka. <laughs> nah, until she saw that video last week. Mm -hmm. And somebody, of course, recorded her, put her video on YouTube, and then bada bing, bada boom, Chew Chew found her. Mm -hmm. You're right about that, Saya. No, the air automatically came on. <laughs> oh, wait, it'll be okay. I think Yukina and then we're gonna seriously still. I mean, but that's Brazilian for you. It's kind of above them. It's above them now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know how when you have a favorite card for any of the girls in the series and you hope and pray that they would come home and then the scouting event comes and you don't get them. That's me with the recent Rosalia ReZero collab because out of the five girls, um, of course you get freaking Lisa and Sayo in the event. I got Lisa, not Lisa, um, Rinko, but Akko and Yukina never wanted to come home. So I am praying to the guys that when it comes to Ian, I have to like grind my butt off in every event that I'm currently doing. I'm too busy to do this next event because of reasons and stuff, but I'm going to have to grind my butt off and just like pray to God that I get them because I just want all of them to come home. The mermaid ones all came home and that was like a fantastic day. I freaking cried because they're my favorite band and the day they came home, I was just like, I cried. I hugged my dog. <laughs> it was just one of those good days.
Just take your time to. Oh God, two two. Huh. Maybe you should go through the back door, Roka. Well, two two. Why don't you give it to Asuka, and then you know they can talk about it. Oh my God, girl! Nah, she's gonna be there all day, hon. Misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. This is going way too out of hand. She called. <laughs> mm. See, there's going to be a point where Roka is going to build herself up and eventually try to talk to Chutu. But see, right now, it's Chutu's being a little too aggressive. And she kind of really needs... Oh, Jesus Christ. There she goes again. Speak of the devil and she'll appear. She'll appear. <laughs> Like I said, she's a little too headstrong and aggressive. So, I mean, she needs to kind of just style herself down. But, you know, that's another reason why I like her so much. I just still hate the fact that they're not in the game. And they need to be in the game. I'm just saying. Love the fact that music's in there. Just hate the fact that the girls themselves are not in the game with their own cards.
Coco. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, <got him. laughs> uh, the most extra character in this series, but you gotta love her though. <laughs> Don't look down. <sighs> Girl, you is hella short. Oh my god. But as you go. But like I said, she just needs to calm down and then let Roka think on her own and then end up coming to her when she's ready. Bombarding her and literally trying to gang up on her is a little too much. She's a shy, timid girl. Hey, Palio. <laughs> Oh, poor baby. Why don't you do a running jump? Oh, you keep it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> of course she is. But you can do both. Multitask.
but sorry, y'all. Yeah. You guys both have your own definition of perfect. And so you just want to go ahead and just duke it out, get it done. I'm okay with that. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay, Roka. <laughs> It's just complicated. That just ooh, chills. Mm. Ooh. Wait, wait, don't take her to the <laughs> No, I think she's gonna take you to G2. <laughs> it's a surprise. I had a feeling this was going to happen. I know. Right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but must have bought little Roka. It's okay. Thank you. 
belong here. <laughs> She's not really herself in a way. Too. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm immediately gonna compare this to the Ish in season one with Kasumi and the old woman in Ish, and how it took Kasumi and them two, three tries until eventually she finally said yes to them. That's what it seems like between the really uh well, yeah relationship between Tutu and Roka it's just Roka is very shy and timid to herself she is a little nervous but when she is playing and when she's really into it when Masa walked in in season two when she did the performance by herself she kind of I don't want to say she puts a mask on she puts almost like a facade on she's a completely different person when she performs than when she sits and talks to you like face to face or when you're watching her on the episode. Because when she's on stage, she's amazing. She's beautiful. She's on a whole number another level. And when you know you see her in an episode, she is very to herself. And she's nervous and scared. And that's okay. I like that about her. She's just a little adorable thing. I've loved her since season two. And the biggest thing that she's wanted is a band of her own. But the issue that has happened to her in season two... I understand that completely, but this is for her to get a better change and a better outlook with a different group. But it's just, it's in the end, it's up to Chu Chu. Chu Chu said no now, but that doesn't mean she'll, she'll say no later on in the series. There's going to be a point where she is going to say yes to them, it, to her really. It's just going to take time or persuasion. Like, I feel like Roka might be the type where she's not going to take no as an answer because that was the same thing with Kasumi because no matter how many times what uh, a woman said to her no several freaking times and Kasumi really was there was a point where Kasumi like got mm, hella depressed depressed and I got depressed because of it just for like an episode and I was crying over it and until finally she said yes and you're just like oh my god it's the same thing for Roka so, I mean, as of right now, yes, I agree with what Tutu is saying to Roka, but that doesn't mean that um, she's continuously going to say no. No matter how many times you're going to get no, there's always going to be a yes. And it may not be, you know, in episode three, which I'm going to watch in a couple of minutes. It could be episode five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, I think like we're having 12 or 13 episodes for this third season. So maybe about episode six or episode seven, the halfway point. Um, in my opinion, is when she's going to be like, yes, I'm going to say yes to you. But yeah, Masa, <laughs> I can't with Masa. Masa just still, even because I, I didn't say it in season one, but I said it in, I mean, not season one, season two. I said it last week. She reminds me so much of Uo, and I love her for that. Like, I, because at first, like, I remember when I was watching season two, and I couldn't remember who she reminded me of until Fruits Basket came out. And I was like, you remind me of Masa, and I kept saying it to myself no matter what, and then now, like, going back into this seat, to the second, the third season of this, and then, like, comparing her to Uo, um, in Fruits Basket, even though we're not even done with that show yet, I mean, just, yeah, I just love them so much, just, honestly, I I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say it for the rest of this goddamn series until it ends, and until they say, like, hey, we're gonna do, like, a season four or season five, who knows, I just want these girls in the game, I feel like, they're getting cheated on because of the fact is they like, I get the fact is yes. Number one, they have their music in the game. I love the fact about that. It's the same thing with glitter green because glitter green only has, I think one or two songs, they're single. And then a song that they did, I think with, uh, Kasumi, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but since they're relatively new, they should be in the game. I mean, it, it's like kind of how, I personally feel with um, 
Madoka Magica Magica Bukore with um, the anime, there's a new character named Kuro. And Kuro is specifically an anime-only character. She'll never be in the games no matter what. It's still, like, I'm, I'm guessing it's still going to be canon to the anime and to the game. It's just you know, she still doesn't exist. And so I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, well, that's a little bit unfair because there are going to be so many people who are going to fall in love with this girl and her story and like wanting to know her backstory and every little ounce of detail that they can about this character. And you're kind of hoping that not only the anime does it justice, but the game does it justice as well. And so because of the fact is this character is not in this game, same thing with RAS, not being in the game, it kind of hurts because it's just like, I get the fact that you have all five of these these different groups and everybody has their predominantly, you know, different group. I was a Popping Party fan um, first and now I'm a Rosalia, but I still support Popping Party and everybody else in this, um, in this series. But when you have, when you introduce a new set of girls in a group in the second season and you get every single episode will uh, which will be about every single different girl, and then you finally get them all together in season two, in the second freaking episode. You're in a way you're setting them up to be in the game, but in the at the end of the day, it's up to them. It ain't up to me. Well, in a way, it also is. It's up to the fans and everything, and how much they really love and support a group. Because no matter what, it's the same thing that's going on with like. Going back to the Magic of Okore, how they did a survey a couple of weeks ago to say like, oh, hey, what you want in the, ga in the game? I think if, whether it's the EN version or the JP version, this is a long ass video. Um, if they did a survey on it, I think a lot of people probably would put on that survey. We want RAS as playable characters in this game. We want cards of these girls. Roka's been featured in a card. Um, I don't know where. It's in JP. I don't know where it was for what gotcha an, an event card it was. I know I saw it like went a while ago, but I barely really played the JP version because I'm so busy with the EM version-ish. But I saw it and I was like, oh my god, like that's a step. Like literally having them in a picture with one of the other girls, that's good. But the next thing that they need to do besides that, first it was the music. Next is putting them in pictures with other girls. And then finally, it's getting their own story, not only with this, but also in the game that's very parallel to this. Because I feel like what they're possibly going to do, they're kind of doing the same thing how they did with season one of Bendity, where um, relatively, yes, it was the focus on Pop and Party, the, you know, the start of them. It's kind of like that with season one and season two with them. And then once season three is officially over, we're going to get an update for JP. And that's when they're officially going to have their events that are going to tie to them, their own cards, that girl that, you know, everybody is going to try to get an ish like that. That's what I think they're going to do. I'm not 100% sure about it, but just the steps in the direction that they're currently taking right now, there is a possibility to put these girls in the game. It's just like, it's just in the end, it's like, how bad do you want it? That's the biggest thing. And hopefully, you know, one day it does happen, but yeah, go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode three. Okay, episode three and three, two, one, go. Not Masa, it's okay. see i also feel like this episode roke is really going to be thinking about this a lot it you know it may not just be this episode it might be the next several episodes she's going to be thinking about it it's going to be on her mind a lot just how with the previous season with the ot situation and how Ote was going back and forth between RAS and Popping Party and how I was just like, uh, 
because it was just hard for her, but because of the fact is, you know, Ote is with Popping Party, and that's who she still wants to be with at the end of the day, because those are her friends, even though she has a friend in RAS, and how she felt during that, and how she relatively feels when she's with Popping Party. She feels, like, on another level. It's just, it's, this is just going to be Roka's journey to finding herself, and it's something that literally all the other girls have gone through in their own ways. It's just Roka's turn. And it might be a little hard for her for now, but there's going to be a point where she's going to be like, okay, I got this. Super grocery. Oh, the studio where, um, what's this? Like? Yeah, at the beginning of season two. <laughs> mm, that's the role <laughs> I mean but you can always take somebody's phone who hasn't voted and just go on there and just spam <laughs> That is no landslide. <laughs> mm. And how many times are you guys performing? <laughs> Might as well do five. <laughs> huh? Oh, locked there too. Hmm.
No. Why don't you just talk to them about it? Especially you could you could talk to Ote. Ote is like literally could help your situation. See, Ote knows how you feel. Oh my god! Ah! Okay. Well, Rosalia has that, you know, je ne sais quoi, that it factor. You guys have it too, but you're still missing Roca. Why don't you just let her try again? She wasn't ready at that point. Okay. Yeah, over there. <laughs> oh, <my> talker. <laughs> A rabbit. No. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Of course. You got this, Roka. It's okay. Oh, Ote! Oh my god! I think she is. It's just gonna take some time. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> A quiz. Me too. You gonna make it for um Roka or are you gonna sneak it for her? Either way it sounds good. Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> they even made her 2D. Oh my god, I so love the fact that it's both 2D and 3D. Oh So cute. They're gonna do everything to Yeah. I'm guessing that's why they need the keyboard and drums like that. Oh my god. Oh, it's season two all over again, because I remember during the performances, didn't have lyrics. You know what? That's okay. They, they're doing it for other songs, so that's good. That was an improvement. I love that. But still, they should do a brand new song. I get that. I think because of the fact is this episode isn't, um, I think this is a fan dub for it, but that's okay.
You would think Master would come on a freaking motorcycle and be like, hey, come on, let's go. But <laughs> it's something she's got to do on her own. Go in there and demand a re-audition, baby. Here you go. Stand up for yourself. I know. Swear to God, if you don't say yes. Finally, thank you. That's fine, it's something at least. She 
to still need to get better. It's just to step up, that's all. I'll even take that. That's a win for her still. She's still good. She proved herself. And she's, well, not officially, just temporarily until Tutu is like, yeah, you're officially in there. But we all know it's going to be official. It's going to be before this season ends. We all know that ASAP. But yeah, I think both episodes are really good. They were really, really flawless. Good behind blessings on the character development for Roka. I mean, especially, I love the fact that they did her backstory once again, but they didn't, um, in season two, they gave it a lot, a, a little more longer. This time, they kind of just made it really quick. They were like, here's just a quick little summary of it, instead of, um, I think it was like, maybe almost like five, almost maybe six, maybe up to ten minutes. But it was good. And I'm happy that she stood her ground against Tutu. Tutu is one of those girls that, I mean, I, I've met um, kind of in high school where they seem very tough, but they're still sensitive. And because of the fact that they've dealt with things um, backlash when they were uh, at a certain time of their age and everything. And so they um, kind of take their anger out on somebody else or their aggressiveness a little bit. And so, and on somebody else but she's very dominant and that's one of the many other things why i like her as a character she's still interesting but yes i am happy for roca it's just a step in the right direction Ooh. oh my god i'm so proud of her my baby Oh, you did it. You're so freaking good next week. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, both episodes were good as hell. Um, I just love everything. I'm glad Ote, like, literally had a conversation with her about it. I still wish that we kind of got to see a little bit more with it because I would have loved to see Ote, like, go a little more in depth on how it was like for her to just give um, Roka a comparison because of the fact is, Roka's officially about to be, you know, official, not really officially, but temporarily a part of this group starting in this next episode coming in next week. And this is how, I mean, she already knows how freaking Tutu um, acts and a little bit of paleo. It's just really with the, uh, the other two, even though she hangs out with Masa, you know, anytime when she's working and stuff because Masa comes in. Um, but it's just having everyone together and sometimes typically having all these big, you know, different energies and voices and stuff, it's going to probably get a little, not too much for her, but she's going to see the differences of how maybe Popping Party re, um, acts together versus Rosalia versus Hello Happy World versus um, Pastel Palace versus Afterglow. And then looking at RIS as a completely different um, type of group. It's kind of the same thing where you have idol groups like you know, Aquas or Muse or any other um, type of idols from different animes in some sorts. And then there are um, semi-groups, there's smaller groups where it's just the three girls and stuff like that. And how the dominance and the, um, not, the not only the dominance, but the, just the energy and the emotion that they all bring when they're all together. Because sometimes it can be a little bit, oh, it's too many cooks in the kitchen and, and it's somewhat because yes, Tutu is a very dominant person. We've all known that since season two, episode one, when she went and talked to Yukina. Because, oh God, like that child gave me so many goosebumps. And I was like, oh, because I was at first, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this character. But then like slowly later on with, the, with season two, I actually really did like her. There were some times where I was like, eh, but it's still, she's an amazing character. And I love her English. It's just so freaking cute. I mean, her voice actress does a really good job on it. But, um, yeah, other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes two and three of season three of Bande. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Metro Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, officially, as of next Thursday, um, that is officially where the air date is coming and so i'm wondering because last week we had one episode come out on tuesday this week we've had two i don't know if they're gonna want to put episodes four and five together or if by thursday they're just gonna do episode four or if when tuesday comes because they high dive or high high something um they have it 
but then it's also coming out in Japan. So I feel like what they're possibly going to be doing, they're going to go back and forth. We're still probably going to get episodes on Tuesdays, but then in Japan, they're possibly still going to air on Thursdays for them because on the, because I'm still playing JP, um, on the, 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 the left corner of the freaking, um, not the menu screen, but just the opening when you press start and stuff, you can see that it says Bang Dream Season 3, you know, um, on the 23rd of next week. And so that's why I, it felt so freaking weird because I was like, why is this coming out early? I ain't mad about it. I love the fact that we got two episodes to get today. I kind of hope that we're getting two episodes because, like I said, um, last week, a lot of things are coming up later on in the rest of the year of 2020, uh, especially with the Olympics coming out of, coming out this year and how there are going to be days where they're going to have to push two episodes or they're going to have to, you know, delay a week because of so many different things. So it really, at the end of the day, it just really depends on them. If it's going to be like, oh, hey, we're going to wait two weeks or three weeks to air the first three episodes, then I'm so fine with that. But it's just like, at the end of the day, it's up to them. I would literally say, like, um, not only follow and pay attention to the JP and the, um, there's a fan sub entity, uh, Twitter account that I follow. So they'll probably have some stuff on it too, but it's just really, we, we ain't gonna know. But until then, I will either see you guys next Tuesday for episodes maybe four and five or next Thursday for episodes four and five. I'm not 100% sure. So whatever time or whatever day it comes out, that is the following time that you, or day you guys will see me. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.